Я на ЦУМ, мне на ЦУМ нужно было, короче, припарковаться, там мама дождаться. Ever wondered why women outlive men? Watch these guys at work and you may just understand why. These construction machinery accidents are more than just dangerous, they're unbelievable. As these machines flirt with disaster, one question sticks. How do they survive this chaos? You're working your bulldozer near a cliff edge, and things start going south. What do you do? This guy thought he could just pull the bulldozer back, no big deal. But instead, the ground gives way and down he goes, sliding like a kid on a slip and slide. But, you know, more life-threatening. At this point, I've got to wonder, was this guy trying to audition for some construction-themed version of Fast and Furious? Because let's be honest, Dom Toretto, he is definitely not. Thankfully, he wasn't seriously injured, but can we talk about how incredibly lucky he was that the bulldozer didn't tip over and crush him? Seriously, dude, what was the plan here? It's one of those moments that makes you just shake your head and think, yep, this is why women outlive us. Honestly, the real hero in this situation has to be gravity for not finishing the job and taking him out completely. A rookie dozer operator who probably thinks he's some kind of mud king confidently says, no problem, I'll just drive this thing right into the mud and get the job done. Fast forward a few minutes and he is so hopelessly stuck that an excavator has to come to his rescue. Now I don't know about you, but if I found myself needing a rescue from another machine after such a move, I would definitely start reconsidering some of my life choices. Maybe not as invincible as he thought. It's almost like watching someone walk into quicksand and going, yeah, that'll be fine. Spoiler alert, it's not fine. And the best part, this whole mud escapade leads to lost time and extra cost. I mean, did you think the mud was going to just play nice because you had a fancy machine? No, sir, the mud had other plans, and now you've got a whole audience watching you dig yourself into, and hopefully out of, this mess. Okay, here is one for the books. Some genius thought it would be a brilliant idea to spread fine gravel over mud and then roll a heavy compactor right over it. Spoiler alert, it did not end well. The compactor began sinking like a stone and water, tipping dangerously to one side as if it were about to flip over completely. Honestly, if you didn't see this disaster coming from a mile away, I'm not sure what to tell you. What exactly did they expect to happen? Gravity is undefeated after all. You really think that the compactor would just glide effortlessly over the mud like some sort of heavy machinery ballerina dancing across a smooth stage? It is in moments like these that I start to wonder if these operators are living in an alternate reality, where the laws of physics, particularly gravity, just simply don't apply. The ensuing rescue operation to free the stuck equipment was akin to watching someone try to yank a sunken ship out of a pit of quicksand. Slow, messy, and utterly frustrating. In the end, it was a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted money, and probably more than a few very embarrassed workers standing around wondering how things went so wrong.
Hey, I'm popping in really quick. My name is William. I run the channel here at Extreme Force. I also run a premium merino wool sock brand for trade workers called Camel City Mill. Now, we offer three lengths. These socks are perfect. We have the boot cut, the crew, and the ankle. These socks are perfect if you struggle with sweaty feet, if you're on your feet for 12, 14 hours a day, if you work in the trades, anything where any hard work is necessary, then you need our socks and there are three main reasons why. Reason number one is if you struggle with sweaty, stinky feet, using a merino wool sock, that's gonna help you tremendously. Number two, we don't use any merino wool. We use a special proprietary yarn called Ironside Merino Wool. The way we kind of spin that together, it makes our socks twice as durable compared to regular merino wool. Here's an example where I'm picking up a 15 pound kettlebell with a single thread of our Ironside Merino wool. Not only that, but we also do double plated nylon fortification in the toe and in the heel. This makes our socks so durable that we offer a 10 year durability guarantee. So that means if you get a hole in your socks within the first 10 years, no joke, you can send them back to us. We'll give you a brand new pair completely free. The third thing you're gonna love about these socks is that they are 100% USA made. So our factory is in North Carolina, the wool's in North Carolina. We're a North Carolina company. We're really proud about that. North Carolina is the hosiery sock capital of the United States. We're right there, we're epicenter. So if you like American made products, if you like an American made pair of socks, it has a 10 year durability guarantee that will give you dry, comfortable feet. Even if you're working a 14 hour shift in 100 degree weather, make that feel like easy mode. If you want a pair of these socks right now, use the link down in the description below. We'll hook you up. Thank you again for watching Extreme Force. Now let's get back to the video. Someone forgot to factor in the weight of the boom arm and bucket because, well, that's not important, right? So this crane starts tipping, and it's like watching a slow motion disaster unfold. I get it, math is hard, but this is basic stuff. You can practically hear the crane operator whispering, it's fine, everything's fine, as the whole thing starts to tip over like a Jenga tower. What I want to know is, at what point do you throw in the towel and admit defeat? Watching this thing slowly lean over feels like watching a horror movie when you're yelling at the screen, but no one listens. If you're in construction and you don't account for 20% of the machine's weight, I'm sorry, but that's on you. This one's a textbook case of human error, and all I can say is, better luck next time. Unprofessional blasting caused an entire hill to slide down into the river, taking three cars with it. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the casual destruction here? It's like, oh, hey, there goes your car. Oh, wait, maybe two more. The fact that no one was seriously hurt in this mess is nothing short of a miracle. Honestly, considering how bad it could have been, it is amazing that everyone walked away in one piece. But seriously, who was in charge of this operation? A couple of people got injured and the whole hillside collapsed like it was made of sand. You know it's pretty bad when the only silver lining is being grateful that the crane didn't topple over along with everything else. It's the kind of accident where you just sit back, shake your head and think, well, that escalated quickly. Here's a pro tip for next time. Maybe consider hiring professionals who actually know how to handle blasting without turning half the landscape into a chaotic disaster zone. It's probably safer for everyone involved, not to mention the scenery. And that's your lot for today. 
So which one were you surprised by the most? Let us know down in the comments below.